Every now and then comes a new LEGO set that just nails it, like big time, in almost every aspect of its design. So for me, personally, in 2021, this one is it. At over 2000 pieces, it's the biggest space shuttle LEGO has ever produced, and this particular model celebrates the 40th anniversary of the space shuttle program, showcasing the discovery that in 1990 was assigned to launch and deploy the Hubble Space telescope. When you pick up the model, and believe me, you will, this is where the building instructions first take you. The stand makes use of very clever LEGO angles and the Hubble Space Telescope itself is a perfect display piece. In its own right, this could probably be a standalone LEGO set. It comes with a detailed plaque, the solar panels are made of golden foil sheets and they can be tilted and adjusted. The aperture door opens and closes like the real thing to avoid light from the sun entering and damaging the telescope and some of his instruments. You also have the communications antenna and a printed slope. Now if you look closely you can see that most of the pieces used to cover the build of the telescope are actually metallic silver. You get 62 of these 2x2 curved slopes along with a few tiles and other lego shapes. As you build the set the building instructions will give you small pieces of information here and there like did you know that something something so you realize how much thought goes into designing a model like this and the build process becomes almost like a museum tour of sorts not without its faults though as it says here that discovery flew 238 kilometers which is clearly a mistake as pointed out in the text between brackets just afterwards which reads 149 million miles. The build itself makes use of really clever LEGO geometry that I haven't seen before, which made it a very enjoyable building experience for me. And considering that LEGO is a square-based system, seeing all of these angles flow seamlessly throughout the build, without lots of ugly gaps showing, is really impressive. The wings are a perfect example of this. Here in the back we can see the three main engines, the maneuvering engines and the vertical tail, which I had no idea that doubled up as a speed brake with the opening rudders. So there's a glimpse of some functions, but that doesn't stop there. One of the main engines is cleverly disguised as the control for the working elevons. Below the main engines there's the body flap that tilts up and down and when pressed forward deploys the landing gear. It doesn't work backwards, as in, if you pull it back, the landing gear won't go back in. You have to do it manually. But it is mentioned in the building instructions that the space shuttle is a glider type vehicle, so it only had one chance to land. So in a way, by not allowing the function to reset the landing gear and having to do it manually, it kind of stays true to the real life design, which is kind of cool. But then we move on to my least favorite part of the set, which is the nose of the space shuttle. Having designed one myself, I know how hard it can be to make the shapes round like the real thing. And personally, I can't think of any way to make this better, but it does hurt the design a bit, having all of these different shapes and angles mixed together. Maybe a new element should have been designed for this section here. You can remove the top of the cockpit, which, by the way, as a new piece I had not seen before in a LEGO set, to access the flight deck, revealing four seats. But Discovery actually carried a fifth astronaut in the mid-deck, which you can access by removing the flight deck. This is where the astronauts changed into their spacesuits before exiting the airlock into the payload bay. The first thing you'll probably notice about the payload area is the amount of bling on the radiator panels on the payload doors. Unfortunately, this is achieved by a huge amount of stickers, which was a bit of a pain to apply, but at the same time it adds that extra level of realism to the build that couldn't be achieved any other way. Speaking of which, the bay doors are done using yet another new element that I haven't seen before. Eight of them, actually. This is a big empty space with just a few printed details, what appears to be some cameras, the communications antenna and the remote manipulator system. At the end of the build you put together some elements to help you display your model and there's a few ways you can do that. 
With the elements you build last, you can display the space shuttle deploying the Hubble telescope with what appears to be folded solar panels or the place they are connected, represented by these golden rods. This could have been an interesting piece of information given in the building instructions. You can also choose to display them next to each other like so, which is my preferred way of doing it. Or you could choose not to use the stand at all and display the space shuttle with the landing gear down. The only issue I have with the set is that there is no place in the building instructions where it is explained to us how to place the Hubble telescope inside the space shuttle. There is a very small square on the box where you can't quite make out where do the foils go or if the golden rods are supposed to be attached or not. From trial and error this seems to be the only way to do this. The set has a few stickers, as pointed out before, but also has a fair amount of printed elements, which is highly appreciated, especially for all the Americans out there. An interesting detail that I wanted to point out is that it seems that the designer's favorite color is olive green. There are a lot of olive green elements inside the build, which is quite interesting and odd, because usually designers will use like basic Lego colors like yellow, red or blue, to help avoid building errors. But lately designers have been having these odd colors inside the structures of Lego sets. I think with adult fans of Lego in mind, which usually appreciate these rarer colors on Lego sets. Now, some people might feel that this model is lacking when compared to previous Space Shuttle models from Creator Expert, which had the solid rocket boosters and the expandable tank. But honestly, at this scale, those builds would be far too big and far too boring. So I think LEGO made the right choice with this model. And I'm pretty sure that there will be some fans out there which will complete the set with some of those extras. So all in all, this is an amazing LEGO model. It makes for a perfect display piece and it has been one of the best building experiences that I've had in recent months. As for parts, it has great value, including some new pieces and all of that bling from the Hubble telescope. So I would encourage you guys to get this as soon as you can, because considering how wrong LEGO was in the past trying to guess the public demand for these kinds of LEGO sets. I truly believe that this one, when it goes for sale on April 1st in just a few days, will be out of stock and in back order in just a few hours. Like, subscribe and see you on the next one.